What's up, Collector fam? It's your boy Tony the Toy Rapper. Back with another rigorous resin review for new PVC, previewed or pre used. And this one is new. At least it's new to me. It is Thanos of the Infinity Saga. Now, notice I didn't say the Infinity Gauntlet, which is the comic book which Thanos in this iteration is kind of based on for the MCU. We're not going to get too far into the backstory for Thanos, but there is a few things that were utterly changed for the movies that are not exactly the same as the comic book. I think at the very least, you guys should understand why it is he is the way he is. That big purple chin with the, with the lines running through it. The reason that he looks the way he does is because... He is part deviant. He has got a genetic modification that makes his face look the way he does. His sibling and his family didn't all look this way. He grew up on a planet called Titan. Well, let's call it a moon. Happens to be one of Saturn's moons. And because he is from Titan and he's constantly angry and done horrible things to his own planet, like blow it up with nuclear weapons... He got the nickname, the Mad Titan. You see what they did there? Two different things. Now, we don't have to get too deep into his backstory because they've kind of done a, a few bits and pieces that you guys are already aware of in the movies if you're not familiar with the comic books. But if you've never seen the comic books, I'm going to wholeheartedly recommend you go out and get the Infinity Gauntlet series. It is so worth reading. And you'll note how it differs from the movie's drastically there are people missing like adam warlock you're about to see in guardians of the galaxy part three and i can't wait to see how they bring him into the storyline seeing as he featured so prominently in the one we just watched and he wasn't a part of it anyway let's talk directly about the statue as you guys are aware this is a diamond select toy statue it looks and feels like resin but it is molded pvc this thing is every bit of three pounds, and it doesn't wobble. It sits perfectly, no movement at all. It's built in two separate pieces. That would be the entire figure here, and then the base unit. And you can tell that because there are pins, one, two, and three, where Thanos is stuck down, okay? And you can see there's a little bit of daylight underneath his boot here, and that's how you can tell two separate pieces that are stuck down there. I'm not entirely sure. I've got to ask them how they're doing these pieces here because these flaps of metal part of his armor on the back do wiggle just a little bit. It has a little bit of flex to it. Never going to move, never going to go anywhere. I doubt you can cut them off with shears. They're on there that tight. But um, ultimately, they managed to fit most of what he should look like in the comic books. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. Before we get to that, I want to point out some really cool details they didn't miss. And that is the fact that he is stepping, standing, smashing, crushing a whole host of skulls. Let me move that in a little bit tighter. Hopefully this doesn't fuzz up on you guys and you can see the great level of detail. He is standing on all those skulls. We have to, we have to surmise that these are skulls of... Uh, beings that he has recently killed or, or has killed in the past anyway and really doesn't care about them because here he is stepping on their remains. The pose that they have him in, it's like he just climbed to the top of this skeleton hill and decided he was going to put in the last of the Infinity Stones into his Infinity Gauntlet. How do I know that? Well, he's crouched over, but what you can't see from this particular view, and I can bend him over to show you, is that Thanos does actually have all of the Infinity Stones in the gauntlet at this point in time. So there you go on the thumb side of things. And that is why his face is so horribly grimacing, his eyes completely white, because he's about to be bombarded with the power of the universe flowing directly into that gauntlet. If I had my druthers, if I could have something else to signify what was actually happening there, because his hands are dropped so low, it's difficult to see, if you're looking dead on at him, that he has the Infinity Gauntlet fold up with the stones. 
So I might like to see some sort of electricity, some power flowing back towards him to signify that he is getting the juice out of those infinity stones. That's a small item. If you look at him against the comic book, there is something to be said for the color change, the variation that they used. If you were to go cosplay Thanos, you'd probably come out of the store with a purple suit. So that suit is normally a lot more purple, where this color tone, which I actually happen to like, is more of a purple. It's kind of a bluish purple, more on the blue side of the hue. It's deeper, it's thicker in. What I love is that they kept to the armaments. The armaments look very, very close to the comic book accurate version of Thanos. His boots are thick and metallic. They look like they should weigh, you know, I don't know, 60 pounds a boot, but only that they would fit a leg this thick. I mean, just take a look at what they did with the glutes there. He is a massive leg individual. Let's just say Thanos is meant to kick some ass. Okay, that being said, I've said before where I really don't appreciate when they put too much musculature into an armament because for the most part, you can't see muscles through armor, people. It doesn't work that way. Unless, of course, it's molded. So I'm going to pretend <laughs> that the backside of him, which is extremely detailed. I want you to take a hard look at that. But you can see musculature in here. So either he is so diesel that he's popping through the armor or this is molded armor meant to caress his very muscular body. I'll, I'll, I'll lean on it being the latter. <laughs> Um, his helmet is comic book accurate. His face is comic book accurate down to the chin. Let's get a better look on that right there. You can see the striations in his face, all this stuff that pulls down looking like almost like Wolverine has scratched him from nose to chin and it healed that way. Uh, so I, I personally love the look of him and the weight. If you want to compare him to, let's say another in this line, I would look at one of his minions. The Ebony Maul. Okay, the Black Order here. And in this iteration, I look up the Ebony Maul, and the Ebony Maul weighs almost nothing. It's weightless. It's, it's less than half a pound. It's flimsy. And it doesn't have to be much because it's the Ebony Maul. But they took every ounce of energy they didn't put here, and they put it in here. This is definitely a piece that feels like a thick resin mold, and it's just molded PVC. And I love it. Now, if I if I could have added anything to the piece that really would have heightened it for me, it would have been something to have to do with Lady Death. Lady Death, ladies and gentlemen, is the reason Thanos does everything he does. They sort of retconned why he wants to kill all of humanity or all of the universe, half the universe, excuse me. But in essence, it's for little more than to please his love, Lady Death. And again, if you haven't read the comic books, I don't know how they're going to inject her into the MCU, but I definitely would recommend going back and taking a look at the Infinity Gauntlet series. Okay, so that is Thanos in a nutshell. Didn't want to take too much time. I would definitely make this purchase on here. Um, everything about him is comic book accurate from his chin to his white teeth. If you look at the comic books, it looks just like the white teeth he would normally have when he's got one of his major scowls going on and um it's it's i wouldn't say super dynamic it's definitely museum sort of pose quality but it is definitely great to sit on the shelf the only recommendation i would have for you guys if you pick him up he's got to be a little higher than head height it's got to be above your head because you want to see the infinity gauntlet you want to see his eyes which get a little tucked underneath his helmet they did such a good job of moving the helmet over top of his face that it creates a shadow. So it's a little difficult to see that his eyes are this bright white, and it's a little difficult to see that he has the Infinity Gauntlet piece uh, completely on his uh, person right now, and it's in getting ready to pull power. So if I we can finish up with a little housekeeping here, okay? We're going to go edge to edge here. We're going to call that. It's going to be just over 10 inches tall, tip to toe. And on the side, edge to edge, I mean, I, I know that you can get it in in probably eight inches, but I would give it a total of 10. Again, I, if you're going to put the statues on the shelf, especially going to be with something else, you got to give it a little breathing room. Otherwise, the congestion is like, ugh, we're not really displaying this well. So that is Thanos from Diamond Select Toys, the Infinity 
war from the MCU. That's the accuracy they were going for in this particular model. They did a fantastic job. If you're only going to get one of the baddies from the uh, Infinity Saga, this would probably be the one I'd recommend you getting. All right, that's it. This has been Tony the Toy Rat, and now I'm out.